My last day of a physical job was Thursday. Put my tools away, put all my stuff, cleaned all the concrete out of my car. Yeah, my, that's what my wife said. Yeah, my, you know, concrete, I, I, I guess I started in concrete in 1984, so that's 40 years. Um, only 30 that I've been paying into the pension, but now I'm drawing on that pension. It's a little weird. I took some of my tools and I put some of my tools away. I didn't get rid of them, I just put them away. And then I thought to myself, concrete trials rust out about two months. So I gave them away. Yeah. yeah. Like, those aren't going to be any good. Here, get rid of them. Um, so I'm here. I will be here tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know what the office hours are going to be yet or what times I'll be here, but... I have officially began a whole new chapter in my life. I'm done with that chapter and moving on to here. Um, oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to get to this message. I have too much I want to share. This is not good. Uh, but but I, I can tell you, I am excited about the things that come. I've had a lot of people say, what are you going to do first? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Listen to me. We're going to seek first the kingdom of God. And I'm doing nothing, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to do anything first except seek the face of God. So I don't know what's gonna, what that's going to look like. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't, do you have plans? Yes, but I know something about man's plans. We don't need man's plans. We need God's plan. And so what are we doing first? I'm seeking the face of the Lord. I've got, I am going to try to work a little bit on air conditioners. What program are we going to do? What thing are we going to start? Nothing until we pause and put God in place as we embark on what truly is, in my opinion, going to be a total change for this church. Pastor Dale, you're just bragging on yourself. No, I'm bragging on God. Yeah, God knows what he's doing. So I'm bragging on God. All right. I am going to jump into this. I, I am going to mention briefly, and somebody asked me if I was going to mention the, uh, the show at the Olympics, and I am going to mention, I am going to mention what, they, what perceives to be had done, and I'm going to share with you something that I heard, and I stole it, so it wasn't me, but it was the best statement I've ever heard said that apparently, I, I didn't watch it, I don't know what it was, I didn't go back and look, but apparently there was a, 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 a women, men dressed in drag set up as the Lord's Supper in an, in an incredible, uh, just a horrible display against Christianity at the Olympics. The world, people have all over the country and all over the world have stepped up, uh, Participants have stepped out of the Olympics. It was a huge display, really mocking the Last Supper. As a Christian, I'm not, I'm not surprised. It was all foretold. We should have expected it. Jesus said that there was going to be divisions between the world and himself. It's all written in the book. That there's going to be a separation between the world and him, and they're going to be at en enmity with each other. It was predicted long ago. And I love this statement. I'm going to give it to you. God said there's going to be a war between him and the world. Now, if you're on the side of the world, I just want to say you should read to the end. And that's all I'm going to say. You should read the rest of the book. If you're on that side, you, sh you should finish the book. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway, I, 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 I am not surprised by what the world has done. Nothing they do surprises me. Not anymore. All right. Whew. I am so thrilled to be a part of what God's doing. I'm excited about it. Turn me to, to John. Matthew, Luke, Luke, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Father, I just thank you for your word. God, I, I, so, much, so much going on right now, but I just ask you to lead, guide, direct, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. I've got uh, three pages of notes. I'm not even retired yet. I don't know what you guys are going to do when I do retire. No. Uh, I'm not preaching. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to 
make this as simple and quick as I can, and you'll see why. But John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 8, 31 and 32. Um, oh, come on, Father. Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And I got to tell you that the, they, those that were listening were confused by this. They're like, we've never been in bondage. You know, yeah, our forefathers were in bondage. We're not in bondage. We're the children of promise. We're... We, we don't know what you're talking about. So you mentioned talking to the Jews. We've never been in bondage. We're not in bondage. We don't know what you're talking about. It seemed simplistic to them, what Jesus said. It seemed simplistic. I want to share with you three terms, and I'm going to have to define these terms and kind of get a... Uh, to help us understand this scripture, to help us grab onto this, to understand our walk, to help us grab our walk with Christ. So three terms I want to kind of define what I mean by them, okay? And the first term is simplistic. Simplistic means that it's something fast and shallow. It's simplistic. It's easy, it's fast, and it's shallow. The other word I want to talk about is complexity. Complexity is slow and really, really deep, okay? So you have simplicity, Simplistic, which is something that is simple, easy, shallow, not a lot of depth to it. You have complexity, which is g slow, takes some time to grab, and it's got a lot of depth to it. And the third term that I want to uh, define by my definition, not, you don't have to agree with this, it's okay, is simple. Simplistic, complexity, and simple. Simple is fast and deep. See, Jesus was simple, not simplistic. And when Jesus said that if you continue in my word, you're going to be set free, what he was saying was not, it was deep. Come on, brother, I'm telling you, deep, 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 deep. You'll know the truth, the truth will set you free. And we can tell you that is deep and goes deep. Now, I know that because I understand the complexities that are in there. And so what happened in this scripture, that is, that these people, they saw it as simplicity. They said, whatever, this guy just listened to you and everything's, we're going to be free. He was speaking very deep and then he begins to go in and then he's got to try to explain. See, this is what's interesting. Educators make the simple complicated. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, no, they have to, right? If you're going to have simplicity and you want depth, you're going to have to take it and tear it apart and start making it deep. That's slow. That's not a bad thing. Everybody gets mad at me. Well, well that's not nice. No, it's, it's not bad. Matter of fact, in the scriptures and when we study Bible study, that's the idea of Bible study, right? Is it would take something that seems simplistic or seems small. We take it and we tear it apart and we digest it and we learn and we grow and we allow it to become deep in our lives. It gives great meaning to it. Now, genius is when you can take complexity and make it simple. This is where Jesus, when he would speak, he spoke things that we could study forever and ever and ever because they were super, super, super deep. So we're going to look at these three turns. So, so here we have this idea that Jesus is saying, if you'll, if you'll continue in my word, you know what we know about that, right? All the depth that is in it. Who was the word? Jesus was the word. In the beginning, it was the word, right? This depth, it just keeps layering and layering. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. When the Lord said he spoke and all things were created, the words that came out of his mouth was Jesus. Not his name, Jesus, literally him. The Bible says in another place that all things were created by him, Jesus. How? Because he was the word. When God spoke the word, Dale, that's deep. I know. So he said, continue in my word, continue in me, and you're going to be my disciples. You know my heart about this. You know I want to build a church that knows what it means to be a disciple. But everything about that, we have a tendency to make simplistic. When we hear the gospel, when we hear the gospel, Jesus died for our sins, we make it simplistic. The world hears that message simplistic. Jesus died for our sins. Well, yeah, we know that. We've heard it. 
It's simplistic, but I know it's complicated. <laughs> I know it's deep. I know that it's much bigger than that. And the problem with simplistic, okay, is that simplistic has a tendency to, uh, we, we don't ask any questions. When something is simplistic, we don't ask any questions about it. We, we just say, oh yeah, Jesus died for me. Well, why? What, what is in that? What does that mean? We don't ask any question. When we're simplistic, we just say, okay, everybody's doing it. We'll just go along with it. Nothing happens. Nothing actually changes in you. So many messages that we'll go to church, we'll hear a message, and we literally allow it to be simplistic. We agree. We say, yes, it's true, but we don't change anything in our lives. And I'm not looking at anybody. We make no changes to our lives. We make nothing. We do nothing in our heart. We just take it. We don't ask any questions about it. How does that apply to me? How does that fit my life? How does it change me? Where will this move in my life, in my situation, in my place? How does this fit me? We, 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 we allow that to go. What, you know what happens to simplicity? Although the word is simple, we just, it's gone then. Boom. Complexity, much different. Complexity starts asking lots of questions. Wait a minute, God. You died for me. Why did you die for me? Well, I love you. Why would you love me? Because I created you. Why did you create me? Because I have a purpose in your life. You mean so there's a meaning. There's something you want me to do. Ah, now you're starting to catch on. I didn't just die for you because I felt like dying one day. I died for you because you're a sinner and you're lost in your sin. And I want to change you. I want to bring that relationship back with me. There's complexity involved. And if you don't apply the complexities in your life, you don't change. Complexity asks a lot of questions. Simple is like this. And simple takes time. Simple doesn't happen easy. Do you know what the hardest things the preaching a message is, honestly, when you've got a really good, if, if you, I'm not, you get a really good message together, and you know one of the hardest things to do with a really good message, is shrink it. Yeah, it's, a, it's hard. When you've got a lot of stuff you want to say, it gets hard to shrink it. Shrinking it takes a lot of extra time. It takes much more time to shrink the message into a, it, it, than it does to talk for a long time. Okay? It's harder to shrink it. Uh, it's been said that, that educators, that simplistic is doesn't have any depth to it, that, that, the, that you know, complexity has great depth, and that it takes true genius to simplify something, to, to make it simple, to take the complex to make it simple. That's what Jesus did when he said that. Jesus died for me. The scripture in 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show yourself approved with workmen, which means to not be ashamed. You know what that means? It means to add complexities to your life. Take that word and add the complexity of how does it work? How does it fit? What does the word tell you about it? Study. You got to dig into there. If you don't dig into there, there's no depth in it. It becomes real flesh, hollow. It's quick, easy to say. It's hollow. Study to show yourself approved. My favorite is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Let's turn there. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's, let's turn to that one. So we've got to study. That's the part of making it complex in your life, making it work for you. Hebrews chapter 5. So how do you make the complex simple? And why do you want to make the complex simple? Hebrews chapter 5. Did I say that right? Yeah, 511. Of whom we have many things. Talking about God and the... And, and the order, the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek and Jesus, instead of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when the time that you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again what be the first principles of the oracles of God, and become as such that have need of milk and not a strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Who by reason of use. Now let me tell you why, what it takes 
to take the complicated and make it simple. So we know if it's simplistic, you know how to make it complicated, right? Study. Study. Learn. Dig. Go in there. It's slow. You dig. You look for it. You find it. How do you make the complicated simple? You have to live it. (laughs) It's the only way. You have to live it. It has to become who you are. I love the scriptures that by reason of use, they've taken this principle. It's a, it's a principle that, that is spoken easy. If you'll, if you'll continue in my word, and they take this principle, and then you begin to dig, and you dig, and you dig, and you apply it to your life, and you begin to put it in there, and then you begin to live it, and pretty quick it's acting, and it's moving, and it's changing you. And then you can say something as simple as, Christ died for my sin. And you could say something as simple as, Christ changed me. How can I say that? Because I'm changed, because it's different, because is that, is that still a complex and deep, a deep thing? Yes, it's super deep. It's super complex. But it's simple because God changed me. How do I know God changes lives? Because God changed me. Amen. It's deep, it's fast, and it's simple. But you have to live it. If we're going to experience what God has for us, we, have to, we, have to, we, we can't just simply take these little quotes that come by, right? And I love them. I like seeing the, you know, this or that. You have to grab the complexities of it. I love what Dan was sharing about, about, about worshiping, every, about uh, giving the Lord praise in everything, right? Being grateful, giving the Lord praise in everything. Unless you dig into that, it sounds great. I love it, Brother Dan. I'm going to do that. Right until things get hard. Things get hard, you can't even remember what Dan said. Why? Because you've allowed it to just be simplistic in your life. Added no depth. When you don't add depth to God's word, when you don't allow God's word to bring depth within you, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. You ever had somebody try to give you marriage advice and ain't never been married? How much weight do you put upon what they're saying? You see, simple has incredible weight because it's a life that's been changed, that's been touched, that's been transformed, that's taken that word, that's gotten it within themselves. They now know it. They understand it. They're applying it to their life. They're being changed by it. Brother like you, I'm a soldier of Christ. That message is not simple. It's deep, but it has to be applied. It has to be put into your character. It has to be built into who you are. And if you build it into who you are, it becomes simple. You can say quickly, I am a soldier of Christ and know what it means. (laughs) You can know what it means because you've applied that principle to your life. It is not simplistic. Many things that we do. Listen, I've got... Let, let, me, let me give you a, uh, let, let, me, let me rush through. I'm going to hurry. I'm going to get through these. Simplistic doesn't ask any questions. It embraces popular thought. Whatever people think, they just go along with it. Lord have mercy. Millions and millions and millions of people with doing no research on their own just listen to whatever comes out of the media. With no research on their own. Simplistic. Simplistic is noticed... But no change happens in their life. We notice it, but no change. And it never satisfies. Compliment, co- complicated asks lots of questions. It, it, it looks for frequencies and for solid conclusions. It digs for more information. Leads to integrity. It challenges us. It fulfills us. It causes us to be challenged on the inside. That's complexity. Simple answers questions. (laughs) It answers the questions. It embraces proven thought. Creates value in our lives. Simple. So how do we take somebody? Let's... Number one, all right, here we go. I'm going to give you seven questions. I'm going to give these to you. I'm going to throw them out. You can watch this later. It's on the podcast. It's on the recording. You can get this. The seven questions. You get a thought, right? Boom, thought. What do I do with that thought? Number one, just seven little things, powerful, deep, 
Uh, what do I feel about this thought? Got a thought, got a thing. What do I think about it? It's the, in, the intuition. What, is, what's, what are my thoughts about that thing? And then you, and I love, this is that, go, deals to that second one. But people who are successful in that area, what do they think about it? People who are successful, they've done it. They've worked through it. They've found the victory in it, right? They're struggling with drugs and they're freed from drugs. They, they've been freed from this or that or the other thing. What do they think about that? Those who are successful in it. Is, does the past validate it? I love the word that gives us these examples that Christ lead out of, of his faithfulness. Of all the things we can look through, the examples of the past. Does the past, can it bear up the weight of time, opinion, and adversity? So I've got this simple thought. Will this simple thought bear adversity? Will this simple thought make it beyond what is the, the time? Will time? Will it last beyond that? I'm a soldier of Christ. Sorry to use your brother, but it's a good one. Good example. I'm a soldier of Christ. Will that stand up to adversity? Will that stand up to time? Can I take that thought and put it to work in my life? Yes. What examples? Are there examples of this working? Oh, Lord. David slaying Goliath, right? I mean, can you find examples of that thought, that thing that you're trying to dig deeper? Can you find examples of it working? Yes, lots of them. Finding examples. I love this. Did you know a pint of example is worth, uh, what does it say? Pint, pint of example is worth a gallon of advice. People give a lot of advice, but an example is way better. Give me somebody who's living it or by somebody who knows how to do it. Come on. Whew, that that preached really good later, but I'm going to leave that alone. All right. And then is this something that I, now that I'm, I've got through this, can I just, can I sign off? Can I, can I put my heart, my soul behind it? Can I put my passion behind it? Can I truly, can I sign off? Is this thought, this thing, is it truly something that I can be passionate about? Can I grab it? Can I hang on to it? These are just a few little simple things. Say, well, that's kind of a, a weird list. Yes, listen to me. I like, everybody says Christians don't like science, and that is not true. I like science. I just like provable science. I was raised when it was a theory until it was proven. Digging in, going deeper, going deeper, going deeper. Now, let me tell you something. As we move, we begin to get in and we decide, you know what? This thing that I'm studying, this area of the life, this thing that the Lord is speaking in my heart, this word that I'm a soldier of Christ, maybe that came out. This word that came out this morning to, to, to give the Lord, rejoice in the Lord and be grateful to the Lord. That word that came out this morning, maybe that's poking in there. Maybe there's a different word that what Christ wants to set you free. Maybe that word is poking in your heart this morning. I don't know which simplistic thought has come to you today, but now it's your turn Amen. to take that thought, chew on it, digest it, Allow it to get deep in your life and then begin to act upon it. Because the only way to ever make it really affect your life is when you act upon that word. Amen. I love that scripture in James, right? He that hears and does, he that hears it and doesn't do it, does you deceive your own selves? You don't even know. James 1, 22, 25. Be not a hearer only, but a doer. You have to act. You have to act. Now, now, here's what I know about this thing, this whole process. When you start applying God's word to your life, and you start, you have no idea in reality how it's going to work out. You don't know. It's, 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 in most cases, when you start something new, you don't know what it's going to look like at the end. The important thing isn't that you have it all figured out. It's that you start that's what's important. Doesn't matter whether you've got the whole process figured out. Doesn't matter whether you've got the whole thing figured out. Is that you start taking that word. I'm going to dwell. I'm going to continue. I'm going to seek it. I'm going to look for the depth. I'm going to take the depth and I'm going to apply it in my life. I'm going to put it to work. In the beginning, we don't have a total understanding of what's going to happen in your life or how it's going to work out. 
Whatever the Lord begins to do in you. Honestly, you don't know what that's going to look like. I am there right now. I have no idea what the future is going to look like. I don't know. But here's what I do know. I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to grow. I'm going to look for the depth. I'm going to try to get that depth in my life. I'm going to begin to apply the depth that I've gotten in my life. I'm going to take that word. I'm going to study to show myself approved. And then I'm going to be a worker that uses it. I love that scripture in Hebrews. By reason of use, he learns what the will of God is. Here's, here's, here's this, this is James, here and do. Here's the last, here's what I want to give you. To be excellent at anything, it requires that you do it enough times until you're good at it. Okay? Did you know the first time the Lord says, rejoice in all things, you're probably not going to be good at it? You're probably not going to be good at it. The first time the Lord says, you know, do this or or whatever the Lord gives you to do. It applies to so many scriptures that it's just profound. The things that are just huge. I'm I'm lost in this in in my own study right now. It's huge. When we dig in, it's profound. And when we begin to do it enough times that we can do it and we know how to do it. And do you know what wisdom is? Wisdom is when you do it enough times, apply that word enough times that you understand it. It becomes wisdom. When the Lord says, and I, I got to keep using you because I believe it was such a powerful word. I got to keep using you. When the Lord says to rejoice in everything and you apply it in your life until all of a sudden you understanding that it works, that's wisdom. When the Lord tells you that you're a soldier of Christ and don't be afraid and don't be timid and you put it to work in your life and you begin to act on it and you begin to use it and you begin to put it in there until it begins to happen in your life and you be, not only do you learn how to do it, you understand it. When you understand it, it's like, well, yeah, it's simple. Simple if you understand it. It's simple if you can do it. It's fast and deep. All right, this morning, I, I don't know where, I, I got to tell you, my heart is so desirous of God to help us become a disciple-making church. And I'm going to be honest with you, in my process right now, I'm trying to get deep with that. Right? I'm trying to get deep with it. I'm, it's, it takes a long time to get deep. I'm trying to get deep with it. I'm trying to apply it. I'm trying to learn it. I'm trying to grow it. I'm trying to find it out. I'm, I, I'm, trying to, I'm in that process in my life. I want to apply it in my life so that it becomes simple. So that the next time I can say easy and simply what that and how do you get there. And you can't do it unless you're willing to apply it, use it, put it to work. Okay, wherever you're at this morning, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to wrap up. I'm all finished with this morning, but, but I'm going to leave you this. Whatever word, whatever thing has sparked onto your heart, the responsibility of you digging into it is yours, not mine. And if you don't dig into it, if you take it as simplicity and walk on out the door and go on off, that's between you and God. You could amen louder than that. Okay. It's between you and God how much digging you do on whatever the Lord is moving onto your life with. It's up to you. And then it gets further than applying that to you putting it to work in your life until you know how to do it and you understand it is also up to you. Amen. This job's easy. Amen. I just got to tell you and you got to do all the work. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I know that you want us to continue in your word. I know that you want to develop us. I know you want to grow us. I know you want to change us. I know that. But to change us means we cannot be satisfied with simplicity. We can't take a good thing and say, oh, that's good, and walk out and not let it change us. We have to be willing to dig deeper. We have to be willing to go to a deeper understanding. We have to be willing to apply that principle, to begin to put it in action in our life, to begin to do it until we we understand why it works. And Father, I just pray for your word. I I don't want this to be men's wisdom because I don't believe it is. I believe this was your principle to study and show ourselves approved and then by reason of use 
you'll learn God's will. We use it and we learn it. I think that was your plan, God, not mine or not man's. I ask you to help us as we begin to take the simplicity of the gospel, make it complicated through understanding and study and depth, and make it simple by making it real in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.